Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Hands on SAP Dev with me, Q Macro DJ. Ah, it's nice to be back. Um, yeah, it's been a crazy, quite interesting week. Uh, so I'm really glad that uh, you know we're back on track. Thank you all so much for joining. Uh, really, uh, really nice to see you all. So uh, yeah, good morning, Niels, and uh, good evening, Phil. Hey, how's it going? Lovely to see you. Uh, and Laurence, uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> let's see what happens, exactly. Let's see what happens. Good morning and best wishes to the Netherlands as well. Uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're live again. I've got my coffee. I just tweeted a picture of um, my setup on Twitter uh, and uh, the eagle-eyed uh, Frank Kerntop uh, spotted that I have a new keyboard. I mean, it's it's relatively new. I've got a, you know, I've had it for, I don't know uh, where is it. Well, let me let me just, yeah, I've had it for a few weeks. Um, no, I'm not going to move the camera. I'm going to move the move it, maybe move the keyboard up. I don't know. No, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's a Keychron, and uh, it's like a low profile mechanical keyboard, and it's quite nice. I've got blue switches, Gatoron blue, so they're really clicky. I, I did I did have it uh, in the previous live stream as well, so you might have heard it. So anyway, yeah, here we are. Um, it's a bit cold today. I got my jumper on. I think that's the first time I've worn it. I'm wearing a jumper. I got my SAP SAP logo underneath it. Um, uh, I've got the font slightly too small on my little. There we go on my monitor. There, there we go. That's better. So uh, Lahiru, hi and welcome. Thank you for joining all the way from Sri Lanka. And Samueli, good morning as well. Uh, the original Hawkeye. Uh, Samueli, I hope you just don't mind me just calling you that. I think it was brilliant. Uh, Neil's mechanical keyboard. Yes, I've got. When I first started uh, out in the mechanical keyboard world, I you know I saw on the re on the subreddit for mechanical keyboards that people have got glass cabinets for displaying all their collection of mechanical keyboards, and I'm thinking, what the heck? But maybe I've got almost enough now to display it in a glass cabinet. So you know, who knows. So yeah, I'm using this Keychron, um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty nice actually. Anyway, anyway, what are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be talking uh, a little bit more about the BTP CLI. Let me switch to uh, the main scene though, because I've got a few uh, things to share. Um, we're going to come back to this one. We've got the SAP Developer News uh, episode, which uh, it was out this morning. So let me just share that link with you as well. Uh, all sorts, and I think the most important, well, not the most important, but one of the the key things uh, from a timeliness perspective uh, is that, you know, we've got one week to go before Devtoberfest starts. Let me just share Tom Young's blog post there as well. And good morning to Henry. Good morning and welcome. Uh, colleagues love him. Click, click, click. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to annoy my, I love my colleagues by typing on a clicky keyboard. So yeah, check out that um, uh, that blog post <coughs> from Tom. And one of the things, hey, Santiago, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and Carlos, hi, good morning, good morning, and welcome. Uh, one of the really cool things about the uh, DevToberfest first week, we're kicking it off with a launch party with none other than Jürgen Miller. Uh, so there's gonna be a launch party, we've got, got Jürgen, and that's the launch party is being host. Hosted by our uh, our one and only uh, Thomas Grassel, uh, head of Developer and Community Relations. That's going to be awesome. We've also got an amazing uh, virtual tour of the Computer History Museum over in uh, where is it? Is it Mountain View? I've been there actually. It's, it's absolutely an awesome place. I went there with my son Joseph. Uh, he and I went to Google I/O back in 2011, and then we uh, yeah had a chance to go there, so we did. Uh, I think the most important part is if you've registered already, great. Or let me say this another way. If you haven't registered for DevToberfest, go now, go now. Do not pass go, do not collect 200 pounds. Go directly to the registration page um, for, let me, let me share that as well, actually. Uh, there's the registration page. And uh, if you have already registered, just make sure you've put in your um, SAP community profile uh, ID. You know, mine is dj.adams.sap. Tom's is Thomas.Young, for example, stick it in there because without that, you know, you can't <clears throat> get any badges or win any prizes or anything. So uh, go back in there. The Tom Young's blog post tells you all about that. So that's that. Um, good morning to Jose. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's really nice to see you all. So that's that. Uh, let me clear that, clear that and clear that. And let's sort of get into it. Um, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a bit more about the BTP CLI. 
Uh, last time, it wasn't last week, it was the week before, we sort of installed the BTP CLI. We installed, in fact, in fact, we installed it uh, in a uh, an App Studio dev space. Let me just start this dev space while I'm talking. This is the dev space we used last time. If you remember last time we installed the BTP CLI and we looked at the script called get BTP CLI that I used and there's a script there, right? We went through this script very briefly. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, you might have had a chance to try this out, uh, to grab the script. And what this script does uh, is to go and download the, uh, the, the tarball, the gzipped tarball that contains the latest CLI, unpack it, put it in a, and put it in a specific directory. And we've also added, let me go here as well. We've also, log in there now, uh, to there. We've also added uh, the location where we put the, where the get BTP CLI script adds or, it, you know, installs the BTP command line uh, program, which is in bin. So if I do an ls minus la, we can see there's a, somewhere, where is it? A bin directory, ls bin. Let's get rid of that message there. Thank you very much. Uh, and we've got the BTP. In fact, let's do an ls ls minus l bin. We can see what it's done is, is it's downloaded and unpacked the latest version, which is 2.8.0, called it BTP-2.8.0. And then, because that's, you know, you can see that's obviously, excuse me, the binary, the executable, right? Um, I think it's written in Go, actually. Uh, and um, file uh, type. Uh, bin BTP dash. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, never mind. Um, uh, what's the thing? Anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, but what it's also done is to create a symbolic link so that when we call BTP, it will run that. But of course, that points to that one. So when we, if we do want to have multiple versions and switch between versions, we might want to do that. We, you know, Quite often we won't want to do that, but we might want to do that. So let's just do that this way. So that's what it does. And it's all, it's put it in the bin directory. And where we ended up is if we have a look at the, um, in fact, let's look at it in here, right? In our, in our Explorer, in our dot bash RC, what we did at the end of our dot bash RC is we added the bin directory in our home directory, as in this bin directory to our path. So that when we type in BTP, it's found. Okay, so that's where we uh, that's where we left it. Oh, so oh gosh, being Phil says being in lockdown will attend any virtual parties. I can excellent. I think that's the right attitude, Phil. That is the right attitude. So Peter, uh, Peter says here, here, Phil. But I must say, I'm starting to miss in person tech ed. Hope it's back in 2022. I hope it's back in 2022 as well. I, you know, I honestly have no idea. Um, you know, of course, you know, I don't think many people have any idea. We can't predict. Uh, what was it that the uh, the was it the Danish physicist Niels Bohr said prediction is difficult, especially of the future. Um, uh, you know, I, w I would love to see it as well. I, I do miss in-person tech as well. So Mark, good morning, Mark. Can I read organization's memory limit via CLI? We can try that out. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. We can try that when we get there. Um, so yeah, uh, would be great. Brenton, howdy, Brenton, and welcome. Uh, great to close the week with another BTP Live session. Run simple. Runs, yes, yes, run simple. I, I agree with you, Luis. Uh, run simple. That's that's me. That's my motto. Um, so where we left off last, last time was like a, a mini bombshell, which was, oh my goodness, you know, when we stop and restart uh, a dev space in the App Studio, or for example, if we're running this sort of locally, when we stop our uh, Mac machine, you know, Mac uh, OS mach uh, machine or Linux machine or whatever. Uh, I'm not, again, I can't speak for Windows. I don't know. Um, but this thing here was cleared, wasn't it? Right. So the dot cache, if we have a look here, this is where we left it. Uh, there we go. The dot cache directory points to the dot cache is a symbolic link that points to something in the slash TMP directory. And the slash TMP directory is you know, for, for Mac OS and for Linux and all other Unix operating systems. Again, if anybody knows about Windows, I don't know. Um, Laurent, brilliant. Just registered for DevToberfest. Took two minutes. Thank you for thank you for registering and thank you for letting us know how easy it was. Uh, excellent. Uh, if Yeah, if you haven't registered, register now. Um, and uh, that means that the configuration that we looked at briefly last week is gone. And that's why 
when we say BTP, we're not logged in anymore. And it's not even got any information about the CLI server, uh, or the user we've used already. Now, uh, if we go back to um, the managing configuration here, we will see this is this is a uh, did I share this one? This let me just share this as well. Uh, ooh, see that one there? Sorry about that. There we go. So that is a readme inside of this branch. Uh, you may know, I'm sure, I'm sure you probably do know. Uh, we have this series called SAP Tech Bytes. Uh, good work, Phil. Good work. Uh, we have the SAP Tech Bytes, and we do you know shortage videos or blog posts. You know the, the idea is that you know we don't want to go crazy like a live stream. We're just going to give you something uh, short and sweet. And we've got this uh, SAP Samples repo, uh, and for each of the sort of different themes or topics that we do in Tech Bytes, uh, if I go here, for example, uh, you'll see that the sort of the main readme in the main branch here. You know, it's got like a, a summary of the recent branches. There's one from uh, from Marius, one from Vitali, and so on from Tom. And then it's got all the blog posts that have been tagged with SAP Tech Bytes on SAP Community, right? Uh, so here's the branch uh, relating to BTP CLI. Let me close that now. There we go. And I've just added just recently, just like 21 hours ago, uh, I thought I'd list the blog posts that I've published so far uh, so you can read them, right, uh, and get to them. So if we have a look in managing configuration, uh, this is the this is the blog post where I talk about this sort of conundrum of okay, well, what is configuration? Where is it stored by default? There, a little bit bigger. There, and uh, talks about the App Studio lifecycle, closes it down, starts it up again. It's all gone, right? So that's what we looked at, and that's what's in the config. You know, we want the information is you know what server URL, what subdomain, what you all the stuff you specify when you log on, right? Um, so instead, what I suggest we do now, and what I what I personally like to do, and what I suggest if you know if you're not sure, I would recommend this is having a having a, considering the XDG. Uh, base directory specification. It's a it's a standardized specification. You know, it's not used everywhere, but you know, again, oh, here's another quote. Uh, who was it? Uh, Andrew Tannenbaum, the uh, inventor, the creator of Minix, which was like a, you know, I think that inspired Linus Torvalds to start writing his own Linux. So Minix was like a you know a mini Unix, like a single user Unix. Anyway, and Andrew Tannenbaum said, uh, the nice thing about standards is that there are so many to choose from. Uh, which I thought was quite nice too. Anyway, so um, uh, what I would suggest is we have a look at this base directory specification, and there's what in within that specification we have XDG config home, which is where config is stored. So programs, well-behaved programs, will look to see if the configuration is in a directory that's pointed to by XDG config home, and the default is a directory called dot config, and then within there you get different di subdirectories, you know, one for each program. Okay. So that's what I suggest we do. Now, uh, as it says here, the BTP CLI allows you to specify the location of the configuration file, right? We can do it one of two ways. If we go back here, if I say um, BTP help, for example, let's just, let me just close that and close that well, because we don't need that for now, and move that right up to the top, we can see here um, that one of the options, let's just remind ourselves, let me just scroll up there, let's remind ourselves of the BTP usage, we have BTP, then we have options, right? And then we have an action like get, list, you know, assign, unassign, whatever. Then we have the things that we want, you know, the, the verb and then the object, the noun as it were, and you know, the nouns are grouped together. And then we have optional parameters as well that are dependent on the action and the object combination, right? Now, so we have general actions, log in, log out, and so on. Uh, but we've also got these options uh, format, JSON format, we'll come to that maybe later today or next time. Um, and we've also got dash dash config, we can specify the location. So again, like many well behaved command line programs, you can say you can have a default place for config, but you can also specify I want that, that config there, okay, which is really good. Um, but there's also if we have a look at the documentation, it will tell us that there's an environment variable called SAP CP conf client config, which we can set. And what this tells us to do, or this is what this suggests you, we do, is add this to our bash RC 
so that BTP will BTP will look for the SAP CP underscore client config environment variable, and it will use the location that that points to as the location to look by default for the config file. Okay, it's actually more complicated to describe than to think about. So let's do that. Okay, so if we let's go and edit bash rc. Because what we want to do, of course, is to have that environment variable sort of set each time we log in. And bash rc uh, is the it's the the thing that gets executed every time you start a new bash session. Basically, every time you open a terminal, right? Um, does anybody know? I asked this on the uh, on the blog post. Does anybody know where what rc means? Where it comes from? You know, obviously dot dot because we want it hidden. We don't want it cluttering the directory. We're going to do a normal directory listing. Bash because it's to do with bash. But what does RC mean? Where does it come from? Is it already? It's very old. Let me know if you know. Um, so there, we're going to save that. Oh, it's auto saved. Thank you, uh, App Studio. So, and then we'll also we'll also 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 um, close that terminal. Open up a new terminal. And we can we can have a look in env. There's all sorts of things in env, but we can say env grep sapcp. There it is. We could even say echo dollars sapcp, or even tab complete, right? Because bash will you know tab complete your uh, environment variables that exist, and it points to dollar home. We defined it in bash rc as dollar home, of course, right? Uh, let me know if I'm explaining these in you know too simple a way. You know, um, you know, I'm sure people know this, but dollar home is you know your home directory, which is in our case home user. So there we go. So now, if we say BTP, you know, we're still not logged in. So let's now log in. Okay. So if we say BTP login, oh by the way, uh, I did mention last week, and I think in the blog post as well that we can. We can use the SSO single sign-on. So let's we'll try that again as well, right? We'll try that in a minute. Uh, oh, Niels, uh, a quick Google states RC comes from run command or run com. Exactly, exactly, Niels. Good, good, uh, good work looking up. <coughs> Thank you for letting us know. Um, so uh, run com was a concept. I think it originated in a system on uh, on an MIT. Was it an MIT machine called uh, CTSS? Time sharing something, computer timeshare system, right? Which predates, I think it even predates Multics. And pre uh, Multics was a huge beast. Uh, and of course, that this <coughs> the story is that uh, Ken Thompson and uh, Brian Conan, um, uh, sorry, uh, Dennis Ritchie, sorry, Dennis, uh, created Unix to sort of address the complexity of. Multix because it wasn't really going anywhere, it was getting too heavy, and that's how Unix was born and the beautiful simplicity of Unix. Um, so yeah, um, oh yeah, MIT CTSS in 1965, a year before I was born, amazing. Uh, so Peter says, I prefer dot profile, yeah, I mean, pro, 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 it, it's it's there's there's a, there's a real sort of beautiful way that these things all work together, and yeah, I know, I know that some people dot, uh, prefer dot profile, absolutely, absolutely, Peter. Um, so let's log in. We know about the, C the uh, CLI server URL, the global account subdomain. Now I've got trial um, with the global account we're using uh, is uh, my hands on SAP dev trial account. Come on, BTP cockpit, cockpit. So Edwin, good morning or good afternoon, good evening. A BTP login is the same as CF login. Yes, in in the, in a in a way, yes. I e with CF login, what you're doing is you're authenticating yourself to the uh, the Cloud Foundry server or server, you know, plane. And once you've authenticated, then you know it knows what you've got access to, it knows what organizations you have, and you can start, you know, administering the, your Cloud Foundry resources. In the same way, BTP login, we talk to the BTP servers. We authenticate, we specify who we are when we authenticate, and then it knows who we are, and then it allows us to, uh, it gives us the ability to manage our resources according to you know the global account with which we have identified ourselves on BTP. So then we can start managing resources uh, like environments and you know uh, uh, quotas and uh, entitlements and sub accounts and directories and all that sort of stuff. All the stuff we can see right here, right? In our trial account. So I hope that answers the question. 
Arkesh, run command, exactly, taking a guess. That is a very, very good guess. Good work. Good work, Arkesh. Exactly. So um, our global account, we covered this uh, very briefly last time as well. So <clears throat> don't need to go through it again, hopefully. Um, so when we're logging in, we need to specify our global account, right? Which is that, okay? This is, that's really the only time we need to go to the cockpit because we need to know our global, you know, we might have a global account written down somewhere. You know, this is this is our identification. Uh, we might remember it. it's a bit of a hex code. And then, you know, here for us, we've got trial and math dash GA dash global account. Uh, that's a subdomain. So let's go back here uh, and log in. User, um, uh, hands on SAP dev. And also, what was my password? Um, there we go. Okay, so now we're logged in. Now, the, the thing last time, when we, uh, let's let's do that now. And while we do that, we'll try out SSO while it's restarting. Um, if, we, oh, in fact, let's, let's, let's BTP. We can see BTP here. And we can also see, hopefully, uh, uh, let's just see if, we, where, where's the thing? Where's the thing? Config dot config btp config dot json there we go um we can see these it's stored the server url it's stored the subdomain it's stored the username and it's stored the refresh token i'm not going to show you all the refresh token but that's the thing now that hopefully will still be there right when we stop and restart our machine our dev space so let's stop it prove to ourselves that it'll do and in the meantime, let's go, let's go across to here and let's try BTP. Am I, am I logged in already? Uh, I'm logged in already um, over here. So let's go BTP login <clears throat> minus, minus SSO. Let's see what happens, right? Uh, we need, oh, well, we need to specify, of course, that. Uh, wh what I will do, I'll, I've got, uh, Oh, let's try it. Let's try it. Okay, let's try it. So this is my hands on SAP Dev Global account. You have been authenticated. Now you have been authenticated. However, I think the fact that we've gone to defaulted to Chrome and I'm already logged in with a different account with my dj.adams.sap.com account. Uh, let's go back here. There we go, look at that, failed. Waiting for user authentication complete. 7F841 is not a global account you can access. And that's, be now, that's because my Chrome has a local client certificate, uh, which always identifies me as, you know, with my SAP ID. So, let's go to system preferences. Ch I, know, I know we can change here, we've got Brave, right? We've got Brave, change it to Brave. And let's try that again. Uh, and also, 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 I've got another, I've got another account here. Wait a minute. Where is it? Got it written down. Here we go. Let's try that one. Um, so if we say, uh, do, do that again, clear screen, same thing there. Uh, globally, what we want is 82715B8D trial GA. Ooh. Ah, now we need to log out. Okay, that's cool. We need, to, we need to log out. Of course, we need to log out, don't we? Yes. So let's log out. Sign out. There we go. That's better. Right. Let's try that again. Run it again. Uh, 8271. This is crazy, isn't it? 5B 8D trial GA. Oh, by the way, let's go back to here and restart our dev space. Okay, there we go. Global account. There we go. Okay, so now we get the chance, right? So now the uh, the email address associated with that is qmacro plus blue at gmail.com. Oh, universal ID. Uh, I don't know. There we go. Blue, blue. Where's blue? There we go. Sign in. Universal ID. Yeah, my universal ID is a bit screwed for me. I don't know why. Um, I've tried hard, but universal, okay. Anyway, we get the idea. We get the idea. Um, you successfully logged off. So anyway, um, if you if your setup wasn't as complicated as me, uh, mine, uh, I think SSO would work very nicely. Um, so there we go. Waiting for user authentication. No, let's control C. Let's not, let's not even try and make that work because that's not really what we want to do. Pavan, good morning. Hopefully, hope we will have CLI for ABAP in the future. Oh, 
Ooh. That's interesting. Give us an idea of what what you would like with an Abap CLI. That's that's fast that's a fascinating uh concept. Yeah, let us know. Let us know. Um I suppose what we could do, I suppose what we could do is uh yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. Let me change back. Because I don't want to sort of leave it sort of half in failure. Uh, system preferences. Let's go back to uh, Chrome. Yeah, I want to see this work as well. And if we say uh, clear, let's go. So BTP login SSO, uh, and we'll we'll log in as CDE three F seventy five. Yay! There we go. Okay. There we go, it worked, it worked. And that's because this is my, is a global account that's associated with my, with my ID that is sort of, you know, hard coded, embedded through a client certificate, Chrome, you know, a Chrome based, browser based client certificate. I'm not a fan of browser based client certificates. Uh, I never have been, never will be. However, that's what I've got here on my, on my work machine. And therefore, you know, that sort of, that sort of works quite well for me anyway. So was that saving entry of the password with the SSO option? Did you? Yes, Phil, thank you. Yes, that's that, um, I, I got slightly distracted there. But yes, that's a saving the password entry. But it's also if your BTP global account was managed from an authentication perspective and a user perspective using your own, you know, your organization's own IDP, then you could use, you know, your browser would take care of the IDP based single sign on. So that's that's where you know in my case you know I don't need to do that and I've got too many different test accounts anyway so it's a bit complicated but in in normal circumstances you will you know likely have your own organization's IDP which is connected to BTP and then you can then take advantage of the single sign on for that exact yes so Peter yes you're absolutely right I played around a little bit with the CFCLIs um uh, single sign on but this this works really you know when you've got when you don't have an idiot like me with a really complex setup like this and also this idiot doesn't know what he's doing then it works really nicely as we saw just then anyway okay let's go back thank you peter and thanks for the good question phil does that, does that answer your question phil uh, it's not only so that you can save the password entry but also so you can take advantage of the whole idp infrastructure that you've probably got set up with your btp global account etc there we go. Cool. So let's go back to uh, close that window, close that window, go back to here, uh, go into here, go into here, and uh, let's go into it. J. There we go. By the way, that was uh, Vimium. If anybody uh, is curious as to what those little yellow letters are, I like to navigate with the keyboard, of course, obviously. So that's Vimium, which is a Chrome extension. So we're back in now. The interesting thing is that the, BT the dot config. BTP is still there, right? We've restarted the whole thing. So if we say BTP, we're still logged in. So there we go. We sort of sorted out our configuration. And also the configuration still tells us, yeah, your configuration is in there. Brilliant. Now, because we're now logged in, let us now try and play around with it a little bit. So we've got BTP help, right? Let's move that up a bit. Oh, Mark. Thanks for thanks for dropping in. Love to see you. I'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. Oh, well, I'm there. Sorry. Woo! -hoo. Oh, I didn't let go. There we go. Right there we go. That'll do. Now, um, one one. Let's just let's just start playing a little bit with some of the things, uh, and hopefully this will this will sort of guide us into understanding together what this target thing is all about. Okay. If we say a BTP help, we can see. That one of the sort of the the general actions is target. Set the default context for commands to the global account, a directory, or sub account. Okay. Now it took me a you know it took me a while to get my brain around this. So if we say BTP get accounts global account, right? Ah, now okay. So that's interesting. Um, we it's expired not because we've restarted, but because I've already logged on somewhere else in my experiments. If you log on from a different location, it will uh, generate a new token, and this token is therefore so Let's log on again very quickly. BTP log on, BTP log on, log in rather. Boing, boing, boing. Same that, same that, same that. Um, 
There we go. Okay, so let's do it again. Get accounts, global account. Yeah, we get some information. It's great. Okay, so if we say, if let's, let's just, I think we scroll up here, relating to the accounts, list all sub accounts in a global account, or uh, get details about that. That's what well, account global account. Yeah, get details. That that's the one we've just done. Okay, so what else have we got here? Uh, let's go right to the top. Actions for available environments, available regions. Uh, but we want something. Uh, get details about a, here we go, account sub account. So if we, let's list. So let's say get accounts sub account. So BTP, BTP, get accounts sub account. Okay. Now, that means, well, what account, what sub account do you want me to get information for, right? And in our context, in my context, I've only got a single sub account. In fact, let me just log on again, trial there and we'll just see from a you know visual perspective what is it again? Ah, a visual perspective come on come on come on Barack good morning good morning Barack to Berlin thank you for joining um it's great to have you if we go to my trial account you will see we will see that I've got a global account here and I've already got the standard and you know when you set up a trial account it sets up a uh, yeah, we, we all call it a trial account. And what we mean is it's a global account, a global trial account with one child that's already created for you, which is the trial, uh, which is a sub account, right? And the sub account is called, the name of it, the display name is trial. Okay, so that's this thing here. Now, if we have a quick look, I think we looked at this last time as well. If we look at um, more info, we will see that the ID of that trial is that behind my head. I can't, I can't tell. Uh, the ID of that uh, trial account. Let's just switch that one across there. Um, is ooh, where is it? Da, 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 da. Oh, I can't. Ah, oh, 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 bong. What am I doing? There we go. Oh, that might be a bit better. Anyway, that, the ID of that trial, the trial account, is B three F three B two A three etc. Right now, if we go back here to our CLI. We can say uh, ID, okay? Now, notice that the options, sorry, not the options, the parameters that you specify, there's often a single parameter that is like the obvious one, and then there are other parameters as well. And the sort of single obvious parameter, like the, you know, you need the ID of the account you want, you specify directly without like a, you know, an option name like dash dash something. So let's specify trial. But it's not found because what's needed here is not the display name of the sub account but the id of the sub account everything works on id so let's let's try and list there we go so we get a list okay now we could say you know i i think people who know me oh hold on uh, a a a b b b good name welcome by the way does the rebranding really help the sale of scp i've no idea i'm not in sales um you know uh, rebranding is a thing you know we're, we're all we all uh, are aware of how things are rebranded you know around the world um so i can't answer that i'm afraid um yeah i don't know i don't know uh, i care about the details uh less about the uh, the rebranding and the branding um I like the fact that the BTP CLI is actually called BTP, nice and short, like CF, right? Uh, that's what I care about. So list account, sub account. Now we could also say um, uh, cut minus D. Uh, no, uh, what do we want to do? Uh, for example, fields one, two, T put calls. That sh should give us a nice chopped off thing so it's not wrapping around. Oh, it is wrapping around. Uh, oh, I know. Uh, C, sorry, C. There we go, a nice chopped off thing. Um, let me know if you're curious about this. Uh, we have covered that before. We did do that before, didn't we? Um, I do, I'm a big fan of Unix pipelines. And we're just sending the output of the uh, list account sub account into uh, you know, a, the cut command, which will chop and change uh, different columns or fields, depending on what you want to do. And I'm saying, just give me the characters from one all the way through to teapot calls which is 114, so that's how many columns there are in the current thing. So if we made this, you know, if we made the font, oh, not that not that way, if we, I'm not gonna do it now. If we made the font bigger in the terminal, fewer columns, you know, we get, uh, you know, we get a smaller 
chop off. Anyway, anyway, I digress. So what we need for this thing here is not trial, but that thing with the ID B3, F3, to B2, A3, which is a sort. There we go, get accounts. And there we go, showing sub-account details for that. Now, a lot of the stuff we're going to be doing relate less to a global account and more to a sub-account. If we have a look at the help, for example, we'll see that um, you know we might want to update a sub-account, we might want to get the details, we might want to uh, subscribe a sub-account, you know, to, to create a subscription or update a subscription for a sub-account and so on, right? So instead of having always to specify that sub-account ID, what we can say is, hey, BTP, by the way, it's almost, well, it is configuration and it's stored in the configuration file, right? Uh, by the way, is that still uh, okay? Yes, it's stored in the configuration file. We can say, if I don't specify it and you want it, this is the sub-account I'm interested in. So we can say BTP target. Let's have a look at the help for that. There we go. Set the default context for commands. And we can set a, a global account default context. Okay. We can set a directory as the you know, a, a, an idea of a directory where we need a directory, but we can say sub-account. So we can say BTP target sub-account or just dash SA and then the ID. In fact, before we do that, the current target is just showing that we got, we're targeting a global account. Okay, so now we say BTP target sub account the ID. And now we go from just having the global account targeted to the hierarchy of the global account targeted and within that global account, that sub account targeted. Hey, Uday, hello, and Max, hola, hola, hola. Uh, DJ, can a target also be a space? Oh, that's a really good question, Phil. The answer basically is no, because, well, can anybody tell us why a target cannot be a space? Uh, it's less about the BTP CLI itself. Well, I, no, I'm not gonna say that, it's not, that's confusing. Um, We'll, we'll come back to that in a second, but people in the chat, let us know uh, what you think uh, about Phil. I mean, it's an awesome question, Phil. Thank you for asking. I love all questions, right? Um, but let's just let's just see. So we've now got. I mean, I'm going to give you a chance to for the chat to catch up, and you can you can uh, put the thing in the chat. Uh, space exactly, Max. Max comes in, comes through the door, and wabo answers the question. Good work, Max. Yes, exactly. So. Um, one of the things that, again, I, you know, I have to think about um, all the time is what's the relationship and different, what are the differences between BTP, Cloud Foundry, Kubernetes, Kima, and so on. And the way to think about it is that, excuse me. Coffee's making me burp. What's going on? Have some water. The way to think about it is that the business technology platform gives us the ability to uh, manage resources and everything. But th what are those resources? Those resources are environments. And what are those environments? Well, there are different types. You know, we've got uh, you know in in the in the in the good old days we had Neo, but now we've got Cloud Foundry and we've got Kima, okay, which is Kubernetes underneath. So rather than reinvent the wheel and rather than try and sort of wrap the Cloud Foundry stuff in BTP, in the BTP CLI, no, you know, let's have one tool for one thing. So the BTP manages the BTP resources, CF manages the orgs and spaces. <laughs> Max one, question zero. Exactly, exactly. And we have kubectl, kubectl, if you're weird, uh, to manage the... Kubernetes stuff, okay, from a command line perspective. And in fact, I think, does that make sense, Phil? I, th I think I think it does, right? Um, uh, I hope it does. Uh, if we have a look, uh, let's just scroll up here. Uh, em accounts, environment instances, available environments. 
Now, okay, that's really cool. Let's try, let's try that. Actions to, to sort of, to, to dig in more to Phil's question. Actions for, I mean, I, I really like the way that this help is, is, is uh, drawn out here. In fact, is it worth, shall we, rather than me scroll up here, shall we jump ahead? I was gonna do this next time, but let's, you know, I'm already getting bored of typing these things in, accounts slash blah, 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 and seeing what's possible. So let's, thank you, Phil. Uh, let's install, let's do this thing. Let's do that now. Okay, because that'll help us. And this is what I would recommend. I've got, I'm sure you might have noticed, I've got here a blog post already on auto-completion. So let's do that. That just takes us through this, blah, 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 blah. So let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, uh, let's, let's do it right now. Um, let's go into here and say BTP help. And we can see that the one of the general actions is enable autocomplete. So let's do that. BTP enable autocomplete. And it's going to say, for what? An autocomplete from a BTP perspective supports bash. It supports uh, Z shell or Z shell, uh, if you're of the US persuasion. And it also supports PowerShell, I think as well, right? Uh, on Windows, which is pretty cool. Uh, so I'm, uh, of course, a big, big bash user. So I'm gonna, and this, and this, my environment, right? If echo shell, and when we're on the, the beat, on the uh, App Studio dev space, the terminal is a bash shell, right? Of course. I say, of course, because, you know, it's the one shell to rule them all. Anyway, that's a subject for another time. So we could say, uh, we need to say bash. I want to have some auto-completion for bash. This will install the auto-complete plugin script for the bash, uh, for bash to home user config. And note, look where it's sticking it. It's sticking it in the sort of same area as where it knows it's got its config. So, you know, it's being very well behaved and saying, I'll put it there as well. Thank you very much. Right, do you want to continue? Yes. Now, which run com, run command file should be used for the installation? That, so uh, I think, um, uh, was it, was it uh, Peter? I think you said you prefer dot profile. You can stick it in dot profile there as option three, but it, uh, we're using dot bash RC. You know, I'm, I'm a bash RC user uh, and I've got my other things in bash RC. So in fact, let's just, let's just drag that down here. Maybe we'll see it happen live, right? Let's go to the bottom. I don't know. I don't know whether this sort of shows live updates. That is where this, autocomplete enablement is gonna stick stuff. So if we say, I want it to go into two, there we go. Autocomplete script has been installed. You must start a new terminal session as normal. The reason you're gonna start a new terminal session is so that the stuff in bash RC, in this case, will be you know done. And that's a new line, 117, line 117. SAP, BTP, CLI, autocomplete is blah, blah, blah. Now, let's have a quick look. I've split that into separate lines so we can see what's going on and even that's long, but, but there's a script, a shell script that's installed into there. And then there's a, as well as that shell script, uh, we source that shell script as in we you know bring that shell script to life and we run it. And then we set a couple of bash options, okay? Uh, that are, well, the first one's related to how autocomplete in bash works because the autocomplete support from BTP for bash uses the bash autocomplete mechanisms, right? And that's one of the that's one of the settings for the mechanisms. And this thing here, I, I actually prefer that. I don't like that, but we'll, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, so source, yes, exactly. Okay, Niels, perfect. I like you, Niels. Uh, I like all of you, but uh, you know, good, good suggestion. So let's do that. So let's do what, what Niels says, okay? So instead of sort of closing this terminal, opening up a new one, all we need to do is source, or we could use the dot command, uh, let's 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 type exactly what Niels has typed, which is home tilde. Does anybody know where why tilde represents home? Why that particular character? It's a wonderful story. Uh, tell me if you know. Uh, and then of course that's dot home, same as sort of dollar home, and then dot bash RC. So let's do that. Let's just put that there. It's not going to say anything. However. However, 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 what is that at sign there? That at sign is a result of this thing here, right? Show mode in prompt. Um, you can read about what these, this show mode is, read line options here. There's the blog post there. You can get that, in fact, I'll put the blog post. No, you can get that link from, from the uh, previous thing there. So there we go. We've now got 
Well, um, in fact, uh, yeah, I'll leave that there. So, you know, you get used to it, but then we can turn it off, right? I've got this show mode in prompt, set show mode in prompt on, set show, by, oh, sorry, um, by, beep, 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 bind, let's just copy it, right? Bind, what's going on? I'll type it then. <laughs> Obviously it wants me to type it. Bind, set show mode in prompt off. There we go, it's gone. Uh, it just shows you the different uh, read line, and read line is a thing that supports the sort of line editing. Uh, set minus OVI is what I prefer here, so I can say this and then press escape, but escape in, in, a, in a browser is, you know, does it anyway, subject for another time. So now we can say BTP tab, hit tab. Look at that beauty, look at that beauty. What actions can we carry out? Well, list. So I, in fact, I typed L, I probably I think I typed LIS or something, but L, tab, list. And then let's hit tab again. What can we list? Tab, all that stuff. But we want to say accounts, okay? Within accounts, within the accounts group, what can we do? So Max says, wasn't tilde and the word home on the same key on old mainframe input devices? Yes, it was. It wasn't a mainframe. It was a it was a terminal to a Unix machine, uh, as in a mini computer rather than a mainframe. But absolutely correct, Max. Another ten points for Max. Uh, let's, in fact, um, ADM three A home. Now I've, I've looked this up uh, a while ago. ADM three A. Uh, let's look at the images. Where's one? Oh, there we go. There's one with a the keyboard. If you, if we open up in a new open image in new tab, there, there it is. Tilda and the home key, and and also, if anybody's curious as to why the editing arrow key is in VI and Vim are H, J, K, and L, that is why because that's where the arrow keys were on the ADM three A, and who used an ADM three A but Bill Joy creator of VI, creator of the seashell, which is where the dollar, uh, the, the tilde and the concept of dollar home came first to light. And uh, he, he used an ADM 3A. So we got the ADM 3A designers to thank for many wonderful things. Anyway, anyway, what a what a wonderful digression. If I say so myself, where am I? What's, what's going on? Uh, there we go. Right. Okay. So I just read up the tilde, says Phil, didn't know, obviously, but looks like it was from a Leah Siegler, Sie oh, Leah Siegler, ADM 3A keyboard, and top right home button also had a tilde. Exactly, exactly. Max two, question zero. Tilde for the win, exactly. So, um, BTB list accounts available. See, as we sort of tab completing, it's absolutely wonderful. Available uh, environments, right? Let's do that. Uh, oh, um, there we go, that'll do. So we can now see, let's get rid of the, um, the, the what's it called? The uh, Explorer. And also get let's get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. Let's move that a bit further up to the top. We can see, and I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use the uh, truncating thing again. So we'll pipe that into cut minus C from one to T put calls. I think there's also, isn't there? a way of doing that to say, uh, pipe it into less, is it minus S? There we go, less minus S. I don't like the way that less displays things, so it clears the screen and everything, but less minus S will also chop off the extra space, you know, just chop down to the, the space you've got, okay? So we can see, hey, Hemsagar, welcome. Nice to see you, Hemsagar. Great to have you on board. Um, uh, hi, Bruno as well. Ah, all of us learning a lot here. So am I, Bruno. So am I. Uh, I, I, I'm, I love learning together with you lot. Uh, learning by doing, right? Uh, so just in answer to, and welcome, by the way, in answer to Phil's question, right, which is where this all came from, um, you know, uh, can you, was it to do with, can you manage a space with BTP or something like that? Well, I can't remember now. Um, sorry, Phil. Uh, we now see the relationship. We're using BTP and we can see references to Cloud Foundry and Kima in the context of the different types of environments that we can create, right? Here, for example, 
Cloud Foundry environment is available to us, showing available environments for the sub account. And notice we didn't specify the sub account because we've already said, I want this sub account, B3, F3, B2, A3, blah, 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 which is our trial sub account, which is that one, right? These are the environments that we can have for our sub account. We can have a Kima environment, we can have a Cloud Foundry environment. So landscape, there's another thing. So we could say, for example, BTP list accounts available. Look, look how powerful that is, right? Um, in fact, I've just messed up my thing. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start a new terminal session. BTP, there we go, list accounts uh, available, available, if I can type even, available regions. So with my global account, trial global account, with trial, uh, sorry, with my trial global account, so this is a global account now, what regions can I create sub accounts in? Okay. So why don't we let's create a sub account? Or should we, should we create a directory or should we create a sub account? Let's just play around with this a little bit and just get used to the fact that, used to the sorts of things that we would like, need to do at this level, um, BTP create, we can create all these different things. You know, we've got services, service bindings, service instances. In fact, what, oops, what um, BTP list uh, uh, services, there we go, services offering, service offering. I mean, how wonderful is this? We can see all the different service offerings. In fact, I'm going to pipe that into less uh, minus s because I quite like that. Uh, sort of less minus s rather than do the teapot trunk thing. There we go. So these are the different service offerings that are available to me. Okay. So uh, hey, uh, so nobody's uh, nobody's said yet. Maybe you've only just heard the question uh, with the delay and everything. So let's create let's create a directory. Let's create a directory. Why not? So BTP creates accounts directory. Okay, let's just have ask for help there. There's a lot of help we get. Oh, here we go, Nils. Can we create a whole set of directories and assign sub accounts at once? Um, well, at once, uh, in one command, the answer is no. You know, you can only you can only um, you can only invoke one action with a single invocation of BTP at a time. But, and this is where I mean, this is where the beauty of a an accomplished CLI like BTP comes into play, right? This is the beauty of terminals, of shells, of scripting in general. You can script this. So you can imagine that you can put a number of BTP commands together to do a number of things, you know, and right at the start of that, you might ask for some input, you know, a bit like the way that BTP login asks for some input. I think, um, site developers.sap.com, uh, BTP, uh, command CLI, BTP, what, what? Get started with, auto here we go, automate account operations. So, uh, the wonderful Michelle Kaidar, uh, work with me on this. And here's an example of, is, is that still, is that uh, T life? Is that, I've still got some, no, T refresh. Let's refresh my token, my my Google YouTube API token, and I can, I can paste that in there. So here's an example. That tutorial is an example of a script, right? It's a very basic, you know, we sort of deliberately wrote it as a basic script, but it's, you know, it's organized in, you know, into functions that will maybe do what you had in mind, right? Um, like what I like have in mind, model my directories and sub accounts graphically, generate a JSON YAML output from that and use that as input for BTP. Oh my goodness, that's an amazing idea. Yeah, yeah. So I, I could, excuse me, I could easily imagine doing something like that, right? You know, um, how would we model that graphically? How would we, you know, we generate the, uh, some sort of, you know, uh, machine readable output from that and then feed that into something that would then recurse through that that account and directory hierarchy to create that that's that's beautiful Niels. that's beautiful yeah exactly and and you can see hopefully with with the power we have with this 
we can do that sort of thing. So let's let's create, I mean, let's just start very simply, right? We've only got five minutes left. Let's start very simply. It's BTP create, and let's do it all manually first of all. And then of course we can script it. Uh, accounts directory. Now features, uh, we're gonna have all the features. Now features are, right? I think it says it up here, right? There we go, features there. Um, I think there's an easier way to look at it. There we go, here's the features default, all directories, group and filter of sub accounts, all sort of the, the management features, right? Are called the default feature set. Um, you wanna be able to sort of use uh, entitlement assignments through directories. And also, you know, for example, you might want to say, well, I wanna give this person or group of people uh, administrator access to resources within this directory. So we're going to use all those features, features DEA. It just so happens that my uh, uh, my late father, uh, his initials are DEA. So I always think of dad when I think of DEA. Uh, features DEA, right? Display name. Well, in fact, let's let's do this, right? And ooh, what was that? Let's do this one at a time, so we get errors, right? You know, I, I love sort of stumbling through and learning. Okay, yeah, you need to dis uh, display it. All right, display name. Um, my dear, what a boring name! Display name, my dear. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's all we needed, right? You know, we don't need anything else. We could have we could have supplied some custom properties, for example. We could have supplied a subdomain. If one is not supplied, one will be generated for us, I guess. Yeah, there's a GUID, right? Uh, we could have given it a description. Maybe we could update it with a description. We could have specified, you know, who we want as admins of that directory. So now let's, okay, and it also, also some of these commands are asynchronous, right? If you think about it, the BCP CLI is a client, talks to a server, and that server calls various APIs in the background to go and kick these things off. That's why it's saying here, the state of this directory is started, as in, you know, the creation has been started. Uh, use BTP get accounts directory to verify status. Well, let's try it. BTP get accounts directory to verify status. And that's going to say, well, which directory? Okay, so let's do that. We could we could target that as well. In fact, ew, ooh, let's try that. I don't know. Let's say BTP target directory, this one, right? Directory ID. That's the one that's just been created. So now we're targeting a direct, and you can imagine as well, well, not just imagine, but if you look at my dot files in my BTP directory, I've got all sorts of little utilities that I've already started writing to help me with selecting sub accounts, targeting um, BTP account select, BTP account set, okay? Um, you know, there's all sorts of different things here that you can have a have a have a look at that BTP context. Look at the context of the BTP thing here. You know, uh, you know, there's, within the space of just a few days, I find myself writing really, you know, a, a large number of small utilities to help me with BTP. DEA aren't these the guys in Hollywood movies with blue jackets and yellow font chasing gangsters? <coughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, let's 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 think they are. Let's think they are Nils. Perfect. Um, so that's that. Where are we? So now if we say BTP get accounts directory. Ooh, that's interesting. We still have to specify the ID. I wonder I wonder if that's uh, me doing something wrong. I'll, I'll speak to the folks. Maybe I've done something wrong. Okay, directory created. Yeah. Let's have a look at that. Let's, let me, let's, did I not do that right? Anyway, anyway, anyway. Right. So now let's go to the trial home. Let's refresh this and see graphically. I would also like to say one one of the really nice things. Um, if I say, uh, what am I doing here? Docker uh, context ls. I'm pointing to my Synology. I want to say Docker context use default, which is the oh, I'm not running Docker at the moment. Oh well, uh, doc UI use default Timo. Oh, never mind. Um, one oh yeah, here we go. Um, Doc UI, Doc UI Docker is a wonderful sort of um, you know TUI for uh, Docker stuff, right? Um, and where's it? I thought there was a screenshot somewhere. Oh, there we are. There. Oh, it's a little sort of graphical thing. So you can imagine having a TUI even using BTP to pull information from 
you know, my global accounts, sub accounts, and directories to show me sort of, you know, information in a much more consumable way uh, to me, right? So there's it. Anyway, right, that's that. There it is, my dear, right? My dear. And that little sort of chip thing, I don't know what it is. The, oh, cog thing, right? Indicates that we've got, as it says in that little pop up, user management and entitlements management enabled. If you, if we hadn't specified the E and the A of DEA, we'd have just got a normal sort of directory icon without a little cog okay so we've got there there's nothing in there it's a, it's a managed directory there's nothing in there and we've got no entitlements or anything so why don't we stop there now it's nine o'clock let's carry on with this next friday right and start to figure out how we assign entitlements to this directory so that we can create a sub account in there and so that we can create for example, going back to Phil's question, a Cloud Foundry environment, and we, we can choose the region that we want it in. Okay, so that's all for now. Uh, all for now. All for now, folks. Thank you so much for joining. Um, have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. Uh, thanks so much for all the questions and all the chat. And I will see you next Friday. Bye for now.